It's time for another special guest on the channel today, everybody. Welcome back, Ibex. Hi. Ibex, welcome back. Guys, if you have missed Ibex's previous interviews on my channel, she's been on the channel a couple of times before. Ibex and I hiked pretty much the entire Appalachian Trail together. We were college study abroad friends turned through hiker friends. And she's been on the channel a couple of times before, wants to talk about her AT through hike and wants to talk about her PCT long section hike that was supposed to be a through hike. So last time she was on the channel, Ibex, you had just gotten off the PCT because of the wildfires. You were supposed to be through hiking southbound, but you were kicked off and you were visiting Colorado for a weekend afterwards. So what have you been up to since then? You've completed an entire through hike since then. Tell us about it. Yeah, so got kicked off the PCT. We were super depressed, very sad about it. Um, but we knew we wanted to keep hiking more. And uh, just logistically, it worked out for us to get onto the Benton Mackay Trail. So that is what we did. And I mean, it's we still had over a thousand miles left on the PCT. This hike was only just under 300 miles. So not quite the same, but it just felt really good to do some more hiking and to actually complete a through hike from start to finish. Heck yeah, I bet that felt good after the heartbreak of getting kicked off the PCT. <laughs> yes. And you guys, we're on a Zoom interview, just like I did Moss's interview last time. If you saw that, we're just doing it over Zoom. I'm not really in a rhododendron forest. Unfortunately, this is one of my AT photos. This is in Virginia. Some of my favorite flowers on the whole trail. I loved when all the rhododendrons in bloom. They were freaking beautiful. So yeah. and anyway, just I wanted remember to that area. So pretty. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. I still dream about Virginia. But I just wanted to warn you guys that if there's any sort of lag or our voices break up at all for any reason, we are just on Zoom and Ibex is kind of living in the middle of nowhere in New York right now. We actually already tried to do this interview once and her computer might have died. <laughs> so she's now on a different computer. So I just wanted to give you fair warning of that. I usually like to interview my guests in person in some beautiful location but winter makes that a lot more difficult. <laughs> but anyway, so I want to ask Ibex about all things the Benton Mackay Trail today. So that's the topic of our interview today, the Benton Mackay Trail. So Ibex, can you tell us a little bit about the trail? Like you said, it was under 300 miles. Like where exactly is the trail? What's it like? Why did you choose to do that one? Yeah, so the trail spans through Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, so yeah, it's out here in the east, but down south, and it is 290 miles, just a little under 300. Um, it shares a southern terminus with the AT, uh, and it's named after this guy, Benton Mackay. He was a forester and conservationist back in the day, and he kind of was the person who had the idea of the AT in the first place, of making this long distance trail that connected a bunch of other trails and spanned the whole Appalachian mountains. What a um, hero. I know. Um, and his original proposal for the start of it down South was what now is the Benton Mackay trail and the people, everyone who kind of came together and put it together, didn't end up following that route. They followed the route that we know and love on the AT, but they did still kind of give him this trail and name it after him. So both trails exist down there. They go through the same area. It crisscrosses the AT a few times. And even joins and walks, you know, parallels is, is the AT for like a couple miles here and there as well. So I actually wouldn't have known. So I remember when we started the AT down in Georgia, I remember there was another trail that kept crisscrossing the AT. But until you said that, I actually did not realize that that was the Benton Mackay Trail. So I was oh, to, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. obviously I knew Ibex was doing Benton Mackay Trail in the fall, but I didn't make the connection that that was the same trail that we kept seeing. 
Yeah. Once we actually. Yeah, I remember dating. that was the one. It was this trail that I kept hearing the name of and kind of seeing it crisscross, and I was like, "What is this Benton Mackay Trail? Who is this Benton Mackay?" I didn't know at first. So then I, that's where I learned about it was when we were hiking on the AT, and I remember some hikers were like blue blazing, which is when you take other side trails instead of the main trail, and they were blue blazing the Benton Mackay because there's like Those dirty where- blue blazers. I know. At the time, I was like, "That's silly," but I would like to come back and check it out sometime. So. And you did. Yes. <laughs> so I remember the terrain down south on the AT being really difficult, like tons of just up and down mountains, like no switchbacks, like just very tough. Like my legs were killing me for like the first several weeks on the AT. So did you find the Benton Mackay Trail to be tough like that? I found the Georgia section to be hard. Georgia's just hard. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, But we, so what we did, again, because of logistics, we were able to get a ride down there actually with Moss. And then we got our other family member, Dory, to pick us up at the end. And he spent the night on Springer with us. So anyway, it worked out for us to go southbound. So we started in, if you're going southbound, you start in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Not the same route that the AT takes through there at all. You start in a different section. The AT is kind of like the high road going over the high peaks and and mountains in the Smokies. Whereas the Benton Mackay Trail, apart from the first day, you go over one pretty high mountain. And other than that, you're mostly down in the valleys. So that section was actually much easier than I remember the AT down south being. It was more like gentle rolling. You're still going up and down all day, but it's a lot more gentle. That was very nice. Um, You're just in this super deep, massive forest. And there was a lot of stream crossings. That was a little more difficult there was more fording I would say or just getting your feet wet and rock hopping and things like that than on the AT in that area anyway um and then it went into Tennessee so that was North Carolina through the Smokies mostly then Tennessee then Georgia but definitely the hardest part was Georgia and especially our last few days going to those mountains heading up towards Springer oh my gosh there was one day where we went over five different peaks in the day I think we hit almost 6,000 feet elevation gain that day no it was it was hard (laughs) oh my gosh I'm you know I'm kind of relieved to know that Georgia really is as hard as I remember because obviously I, you know, not having the through hiker experience that I have now, not hiking nearly as regularly as I'm hiking in Colorado now in my life. Like, Mm -hmm. I do think back and wonder, like, was that terrain so tough or was I just out of shape? (laughs) Yeah. And I was really curious to test that as well, because yeah, again, when we started the AT, you know, I had been exercising. I was in some kind of shape, but I was certainly not in through hiker shape. And definitely the mountains in Georgia kicked my ass. And so this time around, I was like, well, now I'm in through hiker shape. I've just hiked over a thousand miles on the PCT. So is this going to feel that hard still? And while we were able to do it fine, no problem. We were able to do bigger miles on it than we were in the beginning of the AT for sure. It still was definitely hard. Like I remembered. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's a relief. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So you said, what did you say? It was like 290 miles. And how long did it take you to complete it? Uh, three weeks. We, again, we had, we started off at a pretty good clip. We were averaging 15s basically. Um, so yeah, about three weeks. We didn't take any zero days, but we did take a couple of Nero days. No zeros. No zeros. I feel like we took so many zeros on the PCT because of things like snow and getting around fire closures and things like that, that when we got on this and it was just, no closures, nothing to worry about. I was like, let's just go. Like, <laughs> zeros. I'm over it. <laughs> but what about the smiles? <laughs> <laughs> there were still smiles to be had. I mean, we didn't push crazy miles. We didn't, I think our biggest day was 18. So like, we didn't do anything too intense. Um, so I feel like there were plenty, plenty of smiles to be had. Oh, okay. So um, <laughs> what was your like average mileage that you were doing each day? 15, 14 to 15. Yeah. Okay, so you said you were down in the valleys in the Smokies, lots of streams, lots of like little river crossings. So Mm -hmm. when we were in the Smokies on the AT, we were forever on the lookout for salamanders because the Great Smoky Mountains are supposed to have such an amazing, diverse population of salamanders. So did you ever see any on the Benton Mackay Trail? 
Yes, there were so many salamanders. And I'd forgotten about that until we got there. The first day, we actually started kind of later in the day. So we ended up night hiking a bit. And there they were, like, out wriggling around on the ground. And I was like, yes, that's right. We're in the salamander capital. <laughs> we didn't see any crazy big ones like the hellbenders or whatever they're called. But uh, we did see a lot of different salamanders and some little thick, thick chunky boys. So, yeah, that was exciting. Oh, that's awesome. I'm jealous. Yeah. What about, like, the, the rest of the, the wildlife? Did you see much wildlife out in the Metamakai? Yeah, um, kind of the usual, you know, birds and squirrels and chipmunks, but we did see one bear that was in the Smokies. Uh, he was kind of like juvenile size. So and he was up the trail a ways when he saw us, he just bolted. So it was very brief bear experience, but that was cool. And then kind of the weirdest thing that we saw was a lot of wild boar or the wild pigs, especially in Tennessee. Um whole groups of them in places and oh my gosh they run so fast they're scary and lots of even when we didn't see them there was just evidence of them everywhere because they kind of dig up the ground and root around in the soil so you can see it all along the sides of the trail um all this kind of overturned ground so that was interesting <laughs> are they big like what do they look like what color are they? yeah they're big and dark and fast <laughs> and I mean not crazy we didn't see any crazy big ones like big male with the big tusks but uh they were sizable yeah are they invasive Yes, they are. But uh, they're hunted. People hunt them. We talked to one guy who hunts them and was going on and on about how they make the best bacon. They're totally delicious. <laughs> and I remember also from when we were on the AT in the Smokies, they actually had traps set up for them because they are oh, so invasive. I think they were really? a problem. Yeah, yeah. And I saw a couple of those this time around too, but they didn't have any. They didn't catch any. <laughs> oh, I don't remember seeing any traps in the Smokies. Maybe I missed those. You might have missed it scary <laughs> yeah <laughs> um anywho enough about the wild boars <laughs> okay so the Benton Mackay kind of goes in the same area as the AT and obviously the AT has a lot of like shelters and established campsites and that's where you stay mostly I mean you do stealth camp sometimes on the AT but for the most part you're staying at either shelters or established campsites so is the Benton Mackay similar yeah, so there's shelters and established campsites. I think more campsites than anything, um, but the big difference is with the Smokies on the AT, you just kind of, you know, before you go in whatever town you're at, before you get into the Smokies, you go online and get a permit. You have to pay to go through the Smokies, but you don't have to uh, like map out where you're going as long as you're a through hiker on the AT and you're going through. All you need is that permit and you can kind of just, you know, stay at whatever shelter you hit each day. With any other hike through the Smokies um, and any other route through the Smokies, you actually have to plan out your campsite for each night. So when you get your permit and pay for it, you have to like have a schedule and be at these specific places on specific nights, which was kind of tricky in the beginning because I wasn't sure what the terrain was going to be like and what miles we were going to want to do if I was going to end up, you know, selling a short and we were going to be like, oh, this wasn't enough. I wish I could have gone further or if it was going to be just too hard and we were not going to make it. Um, but it ended up working out fine. The guesses I made, I just based it on kind of looking at the far out app. They have the Benton Mackay trail on far out. So I looked at the elevation profile for each day and found something that I thought would be reasonable. Um, but I had a stay at campsites all throughout the Smokies. There were a couple of places with shelters for the most part, it was campsites. Um, but yeah, we're not shelter people. I don't like sleeping in shelter. So I made sure to just have us be at campsites. And then going out of the Smokies after that, it's kind of like the rest of the AT where you can just, you know, camp at whatever campsite you want. You don't have to have any specific one designated in advance. Uh, so we, yeah, we camped most of the time. I remember seeing a couple other shelters, but uh, for the most part, it was campsites. Nice. And you answered my next question, which was, how did you navigate on the trail? So it sounds like you use the far out app. And if you guys are not familiar, it used to be called gut hook. Mm -hmm. And so this is an app. They have a, you know, a trail guide for a bunch of different trails, including the AT and the PCT and the CDT. 
And I know that they've started doing a lot of the more small, a lot more of the smaller trails as well. So I was curious if they had one for Benton Mackay. Yeah, they do. It's pretty pared down, like with the AT and other long trails, there's a lot of detail, especially regarding towns, like places to stay and places to eat and things like that. Um, for this, as far as towns went, it really didn't have that much information, just like very basic. But because the great thing about the Far Out app is comments, so you do get comments from other hikers. So usually there would be comments in there about like, oh, you know, such and such is a great place to stay or wherever is good to eat in this town or here's where you could resupply in town or whatever. And there's also a really good website, actually, if you just look up Benton Mackay Trail, there's a great website by... I don't remember what they're called. I mean, they're basically like the Benton Mackay Trail Association. Like they have their volunteers and they conserve the trail and, you know, maintain it and everything. And they have a really good website with all sorts of resources and all information for town. So I looked into that in advance a little bit too, just as far as figuring out town stops. Cool. So what were the town stops like and what were the resupply options like? Like what towns did you go through? Were they cool? Were they not cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, none of them, I don't think, coincided with AT towns, except for Fontana Dam. It goes like right through there where the AT goes through as well. So that area is the same. Uh, apart from that, they were different. Uh, fine for the most part. There was one town, <laughs> I will say, uh, Ducktown, Tennessee. Not very much there as far as we like to be a little bougie as far as our food and our resupply. And all they had there was like two gas stations and two dollars. There was a dollar general and a family dollar. <laughs> and like oh, that was all the options. And we figured, oh, whatever, we'll make it work. And yeah, we did make it work, but it was like, it was slim pickings. It was a pretty lame resupply. I wish, cause I'd actually, we had leftover box from the PCT uh, because we hadn't used all our resupply boxes because we didn't finish. And we had that sent to our first stop, which was very handy, but we also actually could have had access to a grocery store there. So I kind of wish we'd had it sent to the Ducktown instead. And there's a really nice inn where they know about through hikers there and they'll come pick you up at the trailhead because it's not right on the trail. So if you stay with them, they also take resupply boxes. And I would recommend that for anyone doing it. Nice. Yeah. So if someone is looking to plan a through hike of the Benton Mackay Trail, what do you recommend? How do they go about doing it? Um, like I said, definitely check out that website, whatever it is, the association. They have a really good website with a lot of resources. Uh, so I would say look at that. Uh, for me personally as well, the Far Out app is really helpful. Um, and yeah, I mean just do the research. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's what we did. Yeah. And that worked out fine. <sighs> what was your favorite part of the Ben Mackay? Hmm. I really loved, I loved going through the Smokies because it was so different from the AT through the Smokies. Uh, the AT, like I said before, it takes the high road. It does get a lot more views. It's more showy, whereas this is down in the valleys in the forest. But the forest is just so massive. It was so beautiful. And it was just really nice to see another side of the Smokies and to get that experience. Because when I was down there on the AT back in 2018, I kept thinking, like, I want to come down and hike here again. It's so cool. And I want to see more of this area. So I felt like we got... Um, yeah, a lot. I don't know. I just got to see a lot more of down south. And I think the Smokies was maybe my favorite. But also, there was one section in Georgia where the colors really started popping, the fall colors. And we had a couple of good views and a couple of balds, actually. We camped on this one bald and had, like, the best sunset ever. Um, that was really, that was a beautiful area, too. Cool. So did you yeah. like the season that you did it in? You were there in October. So do you think that's a good time to do the trail? Yeah. I mean, I love hiking in the fall. It's kind of some of my favorite weather when it gets cooler and drier. It's just perfect. And when we first set out, it had been pretty rainy. So everything was really wet. And the first three days, I think it rained a lot in the night and then a little bit throughout the days as well. So it was very wet and I was worried, oh my gosh, is this going to be the whole time? Um, but after that, it dried right up. I don't think we got any more. We got one other day that was like drizzling, but beyond that, we had really good weather, really nice fall, crisp 
but like warm enough in the days, but pretty crisp. So you're not sweating all day and uh, much drier. Yeah, I love fall hiking. Me too. It's so great. So this trail to me sounds like it might be a good like practice hike for someone who wants to through hike the AT. What do you think about that? For sure. Yeah, I definitely think so. And I actually knew this one guy I met this year who hiked half of it in preparation to go out on the PCT too. Like, it's just a good one to get out there because it is challenging in a lot of sections, especially the Georgia part, those mountains, it's really challenging, but it's also not too crazy. And because it's shorter, it's definitely a good preparatory hike for any longer through hike, but especially the AT. Yeah. Cause you get familiarized with the area. Nice. Anything I missed, like anything else you want to tell us about this trail? Um, because here while out in the West, it was so like record breaking dry and all the droughts and the fires over here this past summer was like one of the wettest summers ever. So when oh, we got really? out there, it was just like opposite world from the PCT. So lush, so green water everywhere. And it was such an amazing mushroom season, which I'm kind of a mushroom nerd. I love trying to identify mushrooms. I love picking wild edibles and I love taking pictures of mushrooms. So when we got down and we were in the Smokies with all that rain in the beginning. Oh my gosh, I've never seen so many mushrooms in my life. So I just wanted to say that that was one of my favorite parts about the hike as well. And we ate like a bunch of different wild edibles and they were so good. So that was like a really exciting aspect of the hike for us. So any other mushroom nerds out there, this might be the trail for you. That's how it was though for me. So after I finished the AT, I had to go back down to Virginia and finish 11 miles that I had missed when I was sick. And I, I was surprised. I would think like fall wouldn't really be mushroom season because it's not as wet, but there were so many mushrooms down in Virginia in the fall. It yeah. was crazy. Just like yeah. big, beautiful mushrooms, so many varieties. And I was, yeah. Ibex wasn't with me at that time. And I was missing her because I was like, I want to eat these mushrooms, but I can't trust myself to ID them. <laughs> Ah, oh, should have sent me pictures. I would have told you. <laughs> Although I sometimes did, it, it takes was, more than pictures. Yeah, so <laughs> I did, but it was too late, you know. <laughs> Damn. Oh uh, yeah, no, fall is a really good mushroom season depending on where you are, but it also, yeah, it depends on how the summer's been as far as precipitation. So this one was just it was perfect. Nice. Okay, so moving on from there. Obviously, you're going to have more adventures coming. You've had such an adventurous few years. So what's next? Don't ask. I don't know. Yet. <laughs> I need to figure out my life. It's all been <laughs> a mess since getting off the PCT. But for sure, uh, the big goal is doing the PCT again. I mean, I really loved what I got to do of that trail. And I'm kind of of the mentality that I don't want to just go back and do what I missed. I kind of feel like I want to have the whole experience and do it all at once. So I definitely want to get back out there probably 2023 and definitely no bow next time because the way things are out there with the fire season, I just, as much as there was things I really loved about going Sobo, I just don't think it's very practical anymore. Um, and also for someone like me who doesn't really like to go that fast and like push themselves and worry about timing, I also <laughs> feel like Sobo just really wasn't the life for me. So yeah, PCT Nobo 2023 is the hope and the dream. <laughs> nice. Hopefully with me. Yes. Hopefully with you. Um, yeah, I feel like you'll be the good luck charm. If I'm going to do it with you, it's going to work out. <laughs> I know. That's what I kept telling you. <laughs> like stop trying to do it without me it's not gonna work oh, sorry and we'll so see Ibex so was, other... Ibex was originally supposed to do PCT in 2020 and we all know how that turned out and then she went back and tried in 2021 and that's when the fires took her off the trail and so I said like stop trying to do it without me <laughs> it's not gonna let you do it I know at this point when it was 2020 I was like whatever it's nothing to do with you at this point I'm like okay maybe it's because I'm doing it without you I'm starting to get superstitious about it the trail gods do not appreciate that they do not Ugh. okay so where can people follow your future adventures uh, so yeah, I have two Instagram accounts. My main one where I have pictures of hiking trails and me out in the woods and stuff is at spaced outside. Uh, and, and you have, 
Do you have any Ben Mackay pictures on there? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. It was so beautiful. if you guys I want to see the Ben Mackay trial, check her out at space outside on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And then my other Instagram is pictures of mushrooms. As I mentioned, I like to take pictures of mushrooms. Uh, so that is called microgasm. And I will put these down in the show notes to make it easy for you guys to go find and follow Ibex. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to talk about before we say goodbye? Uh, I guess that's it. I mean, I would just, I would definitely recommend the trail. Like I said, it's more of a quiet kind of contemplative walk in the woods. It's not too showy. It doesn't have tons of views, but it's so beautiful down there. It's so lush and green. And uh, yeah, I really liked I really liked the experience. It was a good trail. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you so much for being back on the channel. It's always so fun to have you on here. Thank you for having me. And guys, don't forget to go follow her on Instagram. Thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all next time.